e4. Alright. Okay, let's hit him with knight d2. Definitely c3 as a reflex as soon as I see c5. Okay, so we have a couple options. Now, here's the thing. If my opponent played bishop here, I probably would have played knight there. And then after takes, I would have to take this way, right? Because if I take this way, which I want to, I would lose a pawn. Here, I can take this way, which I want to, but then after bishop here, I'm gonna need an answer. Because I can't play knight here without losing a pawn, and if I bring my other knight there, well, there's no point in bringing my knight here if I'm going to move it again. It takes that square and it allows him to play knight e4. So we're going to take this way, which is the correct way. And then here, we're just going to have to deal with that by, guess what? Playing a move like this. It ain't pretty, but I think the value in getting an 8 d5 is off the charts. Like, I think if my opponent castles here, he's in serious trouble. You've had to do g3 a lot. Really, because I... I haven't encountered this too much. Okay, there's the knight coming in. We got queen e2, castles, all the same stuff. And if knight e4, well, knight e4 should never be possible, Java Bandit, because we've got it covered, right? That's the whole reason that I want to leave my uh, bishop on d3 and knight on d2. It's, it's so important. If you're going to commit to keeping a knight out of e4, actually do it. Actually keep it out. Right? May as well stick to it. What was wrong with cd4? I mean, there's nothing wrong with it, but every single time we play the stonewall, we want to take this way. It opens up our bishop. This pawn keeps him out of b4. Keeps a nice solid pawn chain. Keeps the c-file closed. Put that pawn here. All of a sudden, there's all these moves. Our bishop's blocked. Much different. Okay, he plays knight here. I'm thinking that his intention is f6. I'm not sure. Definitely looks likely to me. He could also be intending f5, though. So I'm not exactly sure right now. Something like queen h5, right? Hitting that pawn is a pretty decent way to find out. Queen h5, and then if he goes f5 he's probably gonna bring the knight back to f6 and i might sit there with my queen on h5 and think okay did i really want to give his knight that's that tempo so i'm gonna go queen f3 if he goes f6 okay i might i might see what he's up to here with a move like queen h5 right because in my opinion he's got to play f5 not the most obvious of course both of these moves are entirely possible as well but let's play a little bit energetic. That's the move we want. But essentially what's gonna happen is we're gonna go knight f3, bishop e3, rook over, and I assume he's gonna play this. He's gonna bring his knight here, knight here, and we're just gonna have to ignore it. Because guess what, if we take there, he's gonna take with the f pawn and he's gonna be stonewalling us. We can't have that. The one downside, the one downside to the move g3 that we had to play earlier to guard this pawn, and it sucks, but we had to do it, is that this plan does not exist anymore. Very annoying. But that's probably the only big downside. Pawn on g3 really doesn't belong there, though. We want it on g2, just a necessary evil, I guess. I should point out that the reason I played queen f3 was I thought in my head that him playing f6 and then me playing here, it would be less obvious for him to play f5. That was what I thought. That if I played queen h5 right away, he would just play f5. But now that he's faced with this, I'm like, okay. He doesn't want to move his f pawn again. He's too good, isn't he? Yeah, 
Let's keep our queen on the uh, EH file here. Bring our bishop, bring our rook, and maybe go for something like g4. Okay, he's decided to take. Now the simple question, do we want to actually trade knights off the board? I don't think so. I think our knight could actually be useful here. So I'm gonna go straight for f takes. Now, it would be ridiculous for him to do anything except this move, so I'm definitely glad he's done that. That's the move he should be doing. G4 comes to mind here. Bishop E3. Rook E1, of course. He takes it, which admittedly is a little surprising. Because now his knight's a little loose. And we still have our developing moves. A great move for us, so, you know, if we can arrange it, it's gonna be king h1 and rook g1. So we'll see. Clearly we know what he's up to here. Bishop h6 is very nicely met by knight f5. Dang. Dang, that's a good one. Well, I'm definitely looking at this. But bad habit to do this without the rooks connected, so. Let's play bishop here. Oh, okay. I don't think that move is very good. That knight wanted to go here, I think. Knight g6 doesn't bother me. Now we have knight g5, which is a... I would say a strong move. If he takes it, then we have those two bishops barreling down on the king and probably some checkmate threats. Well, that's hanging, so I'm intrigued. I think I'm gonna take and just go straight back here. Why not? Pick his pocket. Jax plays 5412, says, bro, get a job. You still play chess in 2023. By the sounds of it, Jax plays 5412. You do not have a job because you are watching someone play chess in 2023. And contrary to what you've suggested for me to do, I do not recommend you get a job. Because if you did, you'd spend less time here. So please stay blissfully unemployed so that I can add your viewership to the metrics every single month. Thank you very much. You guys are talking about ban Jack's play. What do you mean ban Jack's play? This guy contributes to the bottom line here. One view at a time. Can't be banning people like that. Hmm. Many things to take. Let's keep it simple. Hopefully he takes the wrong way. Yeah. Good. <laughs> good, good. It's a very good move. Thank you, Valentinian, for gifting a sub to Jack's Blaze 5412. There you go. Now he's subbed. Look at those benefits. Look at those benefits that Jack's Blaze 5412 has. And of course, you guys know what we call those benefits unemployment benefits. That's right.
Congratulations, Jax, and welcome. What happened in this uh, stone wall? Well, something rather important happened. I I talk about it every time, but you know it always needs a reminder. Is that this is like basically one of the most common positions you get in the stone wall, especially as the rating goes up. And it poses a a situation here. Let's say on the previous turn I had gone here. I would have the the same issues that if I go knight f3 and I don't touch this knight. Well, then it's no problem, right? Because the pawn's being hit, I'm not concerned, but my opponent can go here. And then they can play f5. Personally, I don't like that. I think it's annoying. Stopping the knight coming into e4 is absolutely paramount for our enjoyment as a stonewall player. So, what I like to do is play knight d2, and I actually play it way earlier. I did it right away. But it means that when we get to this position, because I played this move, I don't have these beautiful luxuries of being able to just play knight f3 and go there. If he goes here, big mistake. I play knight here, and I, I go knight e5. But if he goes bishop here, I only have a few ways to defend this. g3, you know, it doesn't make sense to do this. Right? So we have to. I don't love it, but it keeps the knight out of there, and at least the rest of my stone wall plays pretty normally. Now, my opponent took here. Let's say he started with this move. Bishop here, instead of taking. This is more tricky, because now if I go here, and he takes, again, I can't take this way. So, I would either have to play g3 right now, which doesn't look great, doesn't feel great, but still possible. Or I would have to take this way. C takes on d4. And just so you know, if you ever, ever, ever have to take this way, probably one of your next moves should be a3. Controlling b4 is going to be very useful for you. But your position is going to be significantly worse than normal because, I mean, this pawn is just dying to be right there. So this doesn't feel good. If you have to get this, it's not great, which is why I often end up going for G3 just to keep the structure. But you know, you're gonna run into this more and more. Eventually you might say to yourself, okay, you know, I'm not liking these G3 positions. So instead I'm gonna take this position where I don't play G3 and I don't have to, right? This stuff, you're all covered. But what you are allowing here is your opponent to play 94. However, if they don't play knight e4, for some reason they just castle instead, and they never get their knight there, then all of a sudden, queen here, knight e5, knight d2, they never get their knight there, and you're smooth sailing. But then you might run into a few people who play this, and then you're like, uh, you know, I'm not really enjoying these positions. So you kind of have to pick which one you want to deal with. Do you want to have g3 be a move behind, but maybe still get your knight in there while they can't play knight e4? Or you want to allow 94, but only in the rare cases where they play it. And it's not like this position's bad. I just find it annoying because he's kind of playing the stone wall, not us. So it's up to you. Neither option is bad, but you kind of have to pick which one you want to deal with. All right, David's coming at us with D4. Now I'll tell you one thing. When I see E3, I'm seeing a guy. It must, simply must, be a student of the game. My guy. Oh, makes me proud. Makes me so proud. Look at him go. Setting up that Stonewall pawn structure. What a beauty. A fellow Stonewaller, exactly. He knows what he's doing. Nice. 
maybe this. Can be the most annoying to deal with. Or taking and going knight e4. It's always kind of nice. Beautiful. All right, so he's bringing the knights in to support this square, but basically we're both enjoying outposts, except my knight can't be kicked out and his knight can. So I do feel like I like my position here. A fellow stoner, precisely. Interesting move. Solid play from David. Solid play indeed. So basically, I'm now playing the stone wall. <laughs> I kind of want to take here. But it would be nicer to keep that bishop blocked. So we're going to take here. And we're going to dream of trading light squared bishops because, you know, it, if this was what was left, bishop against knight, then I'd be quite happy. It's what that's a way to lose the game, so we'll definitely be taking this way. My bishop is so much better than his. Bishop b4. Well, c4 looks very takeable to me. Bishop or rook. I'm honestly I'm not sure I can decide. Bishop looks pretty good. Rook takes, queen d2. I mean, there's always rook takes and bishop takes there. Bishop takes does make a uh, an immediate threat. I think this is simpler. We'll take it. We'll take it. And although this is a free pawn, I just I like this because it's a protected pass pawn, and that's a long term advantage. Like it's always going to be good for me. So. I'd rather take something that's guaranteed. David Laguna, 88. Well, you're not gonna 
get many games better than this to uh, to dissect. We wonder if David's in the chat or if he's just been watching the stone wall. Clearly looks inspired. However, what did you guys think of this stone wall from both sides? Like, for example, if you're him and you're just following the stone wall, what you've learned so far, what did he do that was wrong? He allowed 94. Okay, we talk about not allowing that. How could he have prevented it? See, he did something where he went, you know, four pawn moves as the first four moves of the game. Normally, I don't do that. I think that's a little too much. I think you need some pieces in there as well. So, E3 is fine. Once you see this move, and you know this bishop's not coming out, <laughs> thumbs up. I would go bishop d3 here instead of his move. If c5 happens, I would go c3. And it's quite possible that we would have reached, you know, the kind of standard starting position. One thing to remember that in this position, if they play knight c6, you must play f4, right? Remember to stop e5. If you play knight d2 here, I mean, they go like this, and you're never playing a stone wall. So we do want to go here. But what could he have done better? He could have played bishop here. Let's say I played exactly the way I did in my game. Here, I would go knight d2, stop knight e4. In my game, I played here, but already I would be in a bad position because I can't play knight e4. And knight f3 is coming. But what he did was he just went f4 and c3. And this just lets me exploit the light squares like crazy, right? You need to develop your pieces in there as well. Now he allowed me to get my knight in, my other knight supporting, my bishop backing it up here on b7. And then here, it's like you never want to give up your light squared bishop. And this is the worst thing that can happen in a stone wall. When they've got a knight here that you can't remove and you're not interested in taking because as soon as you give up your light squared bishop, you're getting killed here. You have no attack either. But it's the worst thing that can happen because you can't kick the knight out and you know that your knight is getting kicked out with f6. And now you're just much worse. And then the final plan, which means that black is much better is the idea of trading the bishops which is very 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 difficult to meet you definitely don't want a position where you're dealing with a knight you can't move or kick out and you definitely don't want to trade light square bishops that's like the last thing you want anyway that's what happened i knew he was playing a stone wall so honestly what i should do is probably play bishop f5. You know, it's always nice to get that bishop out, but I thought, okay, let the guy, you know, let, let's see what he's got. Let's see his stone wall. And then I just decided to go for a, one of the plans that, that we can do here, which kind of plays against what he's allowed me to do. He's allowed me to play knight e4, so we're gonna take the opportunity, we're gonna do it. And hopefully that kind of explains why you don't want to allow knight e4. That knight dominated the whole game. White never got an attack, never got any of the normal moves. And then as soon as he removed the knight, well, he was losing almost on the next move. That's why we're so adamant about never allowing the knight to get to e4. All right, we got the white pieces. Knight d2, keep him out. C5, C3. We've seen this before. F4. 
a6. We love to see a6. Why? Because when bishop d6 happens, I just spent, you know, 5-10 minutes telling you guys all about why it's really annoying because they're hitting our pawn here. But now, we play knight f3, and if they play bishop d6, we just, we can play knight e5. Right? And just shove that knight right down their throat. But these moves are really bad. They do not help black's position at all. In fact, now, when I play knight e5, he can't even kick me out because I'm going to have the g6 square. So, h6 is really, it's really not what you want. It really isn't. All right, let's play queen e2. Oh no, this looks like bad to worse for my opponent. He's playing all the wrong things. I don't know what that is. I don't know what that is. That, that. Mistakes everywhere here. question is do we play this or do we just jump in with the knight it's gonna be good in all cases I'm just gonna keep it simple oh wow he just goes back okay now obviously I want to do this but for the moment he's not castle so I'm probably gonna hold off for the moment like, not do anything too crazy. Queen f3 is usually a move we want to do. Okay, queen b6. It never does anything here, but the one thing we have to be careful of is that diagonal. I have talked about this before. Uh, it's not crazy to just play king h1, especially after they've already taken on d4. King h1 is a feel-good move because guess what? g4, g5. Might be very useful for my king to be on h1. So we don't mind playing that move. That's not a that's not a problem. There's g4. Very natural follow-up. I'm not the man you want. You've made a mistake. I'm in touch with technological advances pretty well everywhere. But I can tell you that no one has produced anything like this. Okay, now this knight coming here is not very scary because it can't go there, for example. Um, but we do need to move the queen and get our knight to f3. The knight on f3 is like the absolute best square. So for the moment, we need to move the queen. Where are we going to move it? I'm thinking queen here. Supports h4, also knight f3. And of course, we're never thinking about moves like bishop takes knight. That's always ridiculous. Okay, knight there. Well, let's kick you out. There's no way you can go there. So go on back, buddy. Here comes our knight. Always very comfy to have this. That bishop is a non-participant, that rook's a non-participant. And there we go. I mean, I think he has to do that at some point. If you don't play f6, it uh, feels like you're getting mated. So, I understand why he did that. I really do. Now, we have some options here. We can take. It seems like the knight's going to take back and then find itself on the e4 square. Which, I mean, I'm not thrilled about, to be honest with you. But it does give my knight the e5 square, which is great. And h6 is a big weakness on the light squares. So I'm kind of interested in that. Uh, the other thing I could try to do is nothing. Let him take and I take back. If I move my bishop right now, I'm dropping b2, which I actually don't really like at all. So I might consider rook f2 so my bishop can move. But I kind of do like the idea of Maybe renewing the e5 square for my knight. Bishop takes. This looks like a g5 kind of position. I did not expect him to take with the bishop. I really didn't. Now, if I simply like move my queen to the h file anywhere. To be honest with you, I don't know how he defends uh, the knight on h7.
Hmm. Bishop d8. Probably a, a reasonable try. If we take and play g6 and queen somewhere here, he can bring the rook up, and although we get checks, uh, his king can escape. If he played bishop e7, I think taking would have immediately won the game. But as for this, I think uh, all, we, all we need to do is attack it. It's a good move. He's getting a queen trade here. Can't say I love that. Not the worst, but... Our beautiful attack. I mean, I could keep the queens on the board, but... I like to get developed here. Not gonna be too greedy. Speaking of greedy, I think if he doesn't trade queens, that's considered very greedy. Okay, we're up a pawn, but we're also still launching an attack here. I know it doesn't look like it, but I mean, Rook H1 is <laughs> about to win material, right? Just because I don't have a queen on the H file doesn't mean the threats are any different. I mean, he still can't defend that knight. Yeah, unfortunately, Tim, this doesn't really help him out either because I take it and I still win that, so. Hmm. Check. Check to the miserable king. Actually is a check. And although after this I could queen and just take the queen, I was gonna say, I probably wouldn't do that. I probably would just um, give him a check with the rook. Check. I'm gonna make sure not to uh, blunder into that. Now let's use this bishop somehow. Check. Can't really do that, so let's check. Check. This is fun, isn't it? We got a lot of bishops here. Oh, bishop mate, surely. Surely. Can't possibly take that with the queen. It's basically like resigning. Queen takes would be a blunder. Good game. He put up a fight all right, but boy, his opening was not... This was not how you handle the stone wall. A6, H6, multiple knight moves. You know, we just got our standard position here, keeping that knight out of E4. G4, G5 comes. And yeah, as soon as you get this structure, like this, your next move is always knight here because then it opens up the bishop. And our queen was on f3, so we just sidestepped in order to allow this. And seems like a fairly convincing attack. He defended very well, though. Credit to him. Queen c7, getting queens off. Very nice. All right, next. d4. 
Again, gonna go with the three, c3. My usual reaction is c5, queen b6. Remember, highly irrelevant. <laughs> this move does nothing. Maybe bishop here? I don't like him trading that bishop. Oh, look at him. Oh, he's a sick animal. He just wants to go here. No, I'm going to invest the queen side move. No, no, no. We can't have guys like that trading away my light squared bishop. It's too damn valuable. Too damn valuable. Can't allow that. Knight here. I mean, these squares are covered, so we're not going to care too much about that. We're just going to castle. Okay. I will take. Now, the big question. Well, if you ask me, I think that he's going to play here and just blunder. Um, F5 does look like a good move because the king is stuck in the middle. I really think he's about to play this move, though. Truly. F5 looks great. Knight E5 looks great. But I have to be honest with you guys. I am so sure that he wants to take on A4 that I, I want to leave my knight here to win his to win his bishop. I'm sure of it. A knight E5 is really what we should be doing. You know, knight E5 and F5, these are the these are the crushing moves. I think we have to uh, stay a little bit true to, you know, the good moves in the position and, and go for F5. But maybe we just one oil check just to see what he's made of. Ship D2, he can take this and actually get away with it. Bishop e3, he can go here. You know? Not really loving the knight getting e4. That's like the absolute taboo for this entire opening. So, I'm straying away from f5 because I very much want to keep my pawns here like this. And support the knight going to e5. But I also don't want to put the knight on e5 right away because I want to save knight d2. So, after a huge think, we play this. Of course, knowing that our sick-minded opponent has been preparing to take our pawn for like 20 minutes. <laughs> Rook A3 was insufficient, of course, due to the bishop. Sometimes you got to play the man there, you know? All right, now the knight goes back, now the knight goes to e5. We know what to do now. And habits once again gets us the dub. Amazing how that works, eh? Yeah, here we're just going to retreat our rook. I like this maneuver here. Very on brand. Knight d7, we have a nice little resource waiting in the wings. One, two, three, and takes. Now remember to finish it off properly here. Let's say you play queen takes. They move their king, right? What's your next move gonna be? Queen takes d7, bishop e5, oops. Definitely, definitely knight takes, right? So you don't wanna be that guy that, you know, plays the great brilliant line, but then blunders bishop e5 at the end and you'd maybe not even win a piece. 
So be careful. Check, get out of our pin here. Oh, I don't mind opening up the F file, sure. And guess what, this bishop finally makes an appearance. And it's with devastating effect. likely to be enough rook somewhere like f3 takes i mean it's definitely winning i think we can go for this i think we can go for this he rejects the piece exactly who the hell is this guy Basically, I think we want this and this, right? course we can take however something about that looks very attractive let's be very principled Maybe here. There's queen b1. That's probably the only move. Let's get ready to play this. I suppose this is a situation where you can pre-move this. GG. Obviously, you got to let him get a queen, get his hopes up. Good game, good game. Resilient defender. Give him a lot of credit. I give him a lot of credit there. And how did our stone wall go? Obviously, tremendously well. First of all, this guy was all about trading off our light squared bishop. Look, I'm not in the business. I mean, a6. No, I'm sorry. I'm not giving you that very obvious plan you're looking for. These bishops off the board benefits black. This is a, you know, blood. pawns are fixed on light squares here for black. He wants to trade that bishop. We're absolutely not going to make it that easy. Of course, in this opening, our opponents literally on the second move of the game could go here. And guess what? I don't have better than to trade it because I'm not giving you control over that diagonal. But if you're not going to do that, I'm not going to give you a free trade later. It was about time we ran into an E4 player, isn't it? There's a quick knight e5 from the lad. I'm looking at this again. I mean, of 
Of course, this or this are all fine moves, but I'm gonna go with the classic. I had a feeling you wanted to do this. I definitely do not want to take the knight. It's only going to give him a protected pass pawn. Same thing for him. If he takes me, pass pawn. Stick with the theme, always F takes. Well, guess what move he wants to play? No surprises here. Hang on, <laughs> you trying to play this move or what's going on here? What the heck's rook b1? I see he's like preparing for the open b file, but buddy, I'm not taking you, you know? <laughs> it's not gonna be that easy. I really feel like c4, he's like ready for the open b file. That's the vibe I get here. How to continue. Huh. The bishops that I want to trade, as we know, are these ones because of all the pawns. So I am trying to think of a way to trade those guys by force. It's kind of tough. I'm going to play knight f6. I mean, where's, you know, where's this? <laughs> He's got to be making use of those moves over there, right? Okay, f5. Well, the one thing it does, though, is it makes that knight really lose a lot of stability. So I think, generally speaking, I'm happy to see this. If I go here, maybe he can take it. I'm actually considering going all the way back. I'll take it. I'll take it. F5 looks next to go. And takes on D5, knight takes D5 looks strong. Two threats. He has bishop c4, but then, of course, he's losing this f-pawn here. Yep, let's grab this guy now. Yes, it's a nasty pin, but this knight is staying here forever, right? I have it protected no matter what. So, although this is concerning in some ways, I'm not too bothered. Nice moves to get next would be maybe something like this. H6, king h7, get off that pin. Queen d4, a good looking move. 
I like it. I know how many people have been interested in my Apon today, so... I'm actually gonna learn from, uh... From what's happened and... <laughs> actually deal with it. we can make our life a little bit easier here. It's basically like we simplified, you know? <laughs> oh, he took with the king as well. Oh, he went king f2. I didn't expect this. Just worked out genius. King F1, it's like, okay, I get it. But, oh, King F2. Oh, he really walked right into it. Now it looks like a genius combination. Here we go. GG. Well, our opponent played e4. We kind of did get the stone wall here. But again, I credit everything to queen e8. It's all about queen e8. Bringing that knight to e4. I mean, you know that he's going to go here, right? You just know it. All right. We're tussling again. Let's just throw the knight in. A lot of desirable moves here. Oof. This uh, looks like trouble. No, no, he's not... Uh... He's not surviving this, that's for sure. <laughs> I'm afraid it can't happen. Start with this because I think it's all forced. Right now I'm threatening checkmate in one. Forced, right? Okay, now I'm threatening checkmate in one again. Forced, right? Okay. Only move that, that stops it. Forced, forced. Only move that stops it. Okay. Check. Well, only moves that stops it. Checkmate. Oh. 
Always nice to get a force sequence. I mean, this is, uh, this is just brutal. This is just brutal. But look how effective. This isn't even really about the stone wall. This is just how good a knight on e4 is. People don't react well to it. Guys, this position right here is like plus two and a half. White needs to understand that like c4 and knight c3 are going to really bring down the house here. And undermine this pawn. But instead, the instincts are just never there. F3, awful. I mean, after queen h4, it's basically resignable. Now, here the game is over. The knight d2 is just terrible. But when you put a knight in someone's face with two pawns protecting it, people don't know how to act. I'm telling you. That's why the stone wall is so effective. Wow. Look at you. You made it, didn't you? To the end of another stone wall episode. Well, congratulations. And if you're watching and enjoying, but you're not subscribed, go ahead and click that button right now. Also click that bell to turn on post notifications so you never miss another video. See you in the next episode.